Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Wednesday, March 6th, 2019. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Patrick Murphy. Patrick, spring ball starts today. That's very exciting. Uh, practice with stretching at 8.30 a.m. this morning. Yeah. Um, and the first hour of practice is open to the media, including uh, the first three periods. We'll be able to video record, take pictures, all that good stuff, and then uh, we'll be in there for about, you know, roughly a half hour after that. So a total of, of an hour of practice is open to the media, about a half hour that we can take pictures and videos. So keep it locked to Bucknuts for all that. We're going to have wall-to-wall coverage, you know, including the aforementioned videos and pictures, we'll have practice reports. We're going to talk to Ryan Day after practice. Um, what's really cool, Patrick, and, and in all seriousness, I know we're both seriously excited about this, there's at least four practices open to the media this spring, including two practices, the entire practice will be open to the media. So um, it's not like we're seeing everything they're doing, but we are getting to see a lot more than we have the last few years. Yeah, it's great. Um, you know, we talked about this the last time uh, I was on and, you know, we were we were kind of previewing spring practice a little bit and saying that we hoped with, with Ryan Day being a first year head coach that they would open things up a little bit. And lo and behold, they did. Uh, we'll get one more practice like tomorrow where we get that first hour and then um, student appreciation day, which is more of a scrimmage and, and kind of, you know, doing some other things usually, but still we get to to see some stuff and usually there's some good stuff out of that. And then another full practice as well. So we'll be about as well informed as we've been coming out of spring practice in, in some time, um, you know, and I think this is probably the perfect time to do that with Ryan Day taking over. Um, you know, almost an entirely new defensive staff, save for Larry Johnson and, uh, you know, past coordinator and quarterbacks coach and uh, Mike Yurchich on the offensive side of the ball. So a lot of change. Um, obviously, you know, normal player turnover, new quarterback, um, you know, four new offensive linemen that, that you know, need to they need to find starters for. And, and you know, we can go through all the positions, but a lot of stuff that, that we are going to have questions that we do have questions about right now that hopefully not only from talking to the coaches and the players, but from actually seeing it ourselves, we'll start to get some answers for answers to starting them up. Some news to pass along um, in case anybody hasn't heard uh, two returning starters will miss all of spring and they are Thayer Mumford and Jordan Fuller, of course, uh, junior left tackle Thayer Mumford and senior safety Jordan Fuller, a returning captain. Um, you know, with Thayer Mumford, it sounds like it's the knee injury that kept him out of the Rose Bowl. They don't want to say exactly what the injuries are, but it sounds like it's the same thing that kept him out of the Rose Bowl. Josh Allaby started for Thayer Mumford in the Rose Bowl. Um, so sounds like that's what it is with Thayer Mumford. And then with Jordan Fuller, I don't know if you can add a little bit of, of light to this, Patrick, but uh, they're, they're, they're just saying he had surgery. Are you hearing exactly what's going on with Jordan Fuller? Yeah, nothing much more than that, um, at least so far that I've heard. You know, I think the immediate reaction to both of these were that it's not a big deal for either of them. They're both, you know, veteran players who have started in Munford's case last year, played a little bit as a freshman, Jordan Fuller's case the last two years. So they should be able to come back in and fit right in. And I agree with that to some extent. You know, it's spring practice. It's not like there's a meaningful game coming up soon that, that they could be in jeopardy of missing. But I do think missing all of spring practice can set you back a little especially given, like I said, you know, a, a new defensive coach um, in the secondary and Jeff Halfley, you know, Jordan Fuller's not going to get to work with him until, you know, they get to really until they get to fall camp. Um, and then with, with Thayer Munford, he's got to get used to four new offensive linemen next to him at the, at a crucial left tackle position also has to get used to a quarterback behind him. That is, is not anyone he's ever worked with before. So I do think that those two being in spring practice um, would be beneficial. Also their leadership. Now you can lead from the sidelines and stuff. They'll be around the team. I'm sure as much as they can, but you know, I think in, in an ideal scenario and you know, football is probably never ideal with injuries and whatnot. There always seems to be somebody at least dinged up, but in an ideal scenario, you'd like to have those guys in there 
um, given that, you know, there is some newness surrounding them and, and their position groups. But, you know, it's much better to get them, get these things done and healthy and, and all that now than have, you know, them push themselves in spring practice, get hurt and, and maybe miss fall camp or, or, or the start of the season. So, you know, if, if the alternative is that, then I guess missing spring practice isn't the worst thing in the world. They're going to move guys around the offensive line, so yeah. none of this is set in stone. But I do think what we're going to see in spring now with Thayer Mumford on the sidelines just taking mental reps, um, I think we're going to see um, Brandon Bowen really get the shot at right tackle. They know he can play right guard, but I think they feel like they have their guards, at least for the 2019 season, projected at least starting guards with Jonah Jackson, the transfer from Rutgers, and then Wyatt Davis. Um, so they feel like maybe in spring is the time now to have Brandon Bowen play right guard and then or excuse me right tackle for brandon bowen and then at left tackle we already saw the aforementioned joshua Allaby, you know start the rose bowl when uh, when thera mumford was out i think nicholas pettit for rare he already kind of has more of that body of a left tackle patrick mm -hmm. i think it's kind of like those guys kind of rotate at left tackle npf and Allaby on the left side and bowen on the right side again i'm sure they'll have Allaby. And, and NPF also on the right side at times are going to move guys around. But I think most of all, I think they're probably what the coaches are thinking is Bowen, right tackle. Let's see what Alibi against NPF can happen at left tackle. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, like I said, with, with no game other than the spring game at the kind of the, the carrot at the end of the stick here, you can do stuff like that. You can move guys around and, and not, you know, have to worry about it. You, you obviously want to see the best out of them, but you know, this is a chance for the coaches to, to kind of experiment a little bit and, you know, especially a guy like, like Nicholas Petit Frere, who you know, they haven't seen um, a ton of because of the, how many guys were in front of him. Um, obviously haven't seen much at all in terms of game reps. So, you know, he's a guy that, you know, coming out of last season, they were talking up highly needed to put on some weight. I talked to him after the Rose bowl and, you know, he's, he's a big guy, but for an offensive lineman, you know, you can, you can see that he still needs to add to, to that frame and he definitely can. I think, you know, that'll be interesting to see, too, while we're on the topic, how much he's put on weight and, and some of the other younger offensive linemen, because usually that that offseason program uh, tends to bulk them up quite a bit. And, you know, it'll it'll be even more so when we get to the fall. But, yeah, in terms of that rotation at the tackle positions, I think you hit it spot on. Brandon Bowen at right and and then Joshua Alby and, and Nicholas petit Frere um, on the left. And, and then just, you know, see how it goes and, and move players around. Um, I think, you know, while this offensive line won't have a ton of depth until Thayer Munford's back and they get Jonah Jackson in this summer, the tra graduate transfer from Rutgers, I think there are guys that can play multiple positions there, which is, which is nice. So you can kind of figure out who fits best where that'll change. Like I said, when, when these other guys get back, but, or get there, but, uh, you know, it'll, it'll at least give you an idea of, of who fits well in, in what position. And then when we look at practice later today, I mean, it's, the, the most exciting thing is always seeing the new players out there. I mean, it, it just is. Sure. It's always the most exciting thing, of course, starting right at the top with Justin Fields, seeing him out there throwing the ball around is going to be great. You know, seeing Garrett Wilson catch the ball, hopefully from Justin Fields. Sometimes, hopefully we're not just seeing position drills. Hopefully we get to see a little bit more than that later today. Zach Harrison, on and on. Always seeing the new Buckeyes is the coolest thing. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they're doing. And we just last night, uh, or yesterday afternoon, I guess, got numbers for those freshmen. So we'll uh, be able to identify them. Um, some interesting ones, just while we're talking about it, Noah Potter going all in, taking that number 97 from from Joey and Nick Bosa um, at defensive end. So so he's not scared of, uh, of the pressure that comes with that. Um, Zach Harrison, as you mentioned, going to wear number 33. Obviously, James Laurinaitis was was probably the most famous guy to wear that in in recent years. Justin Fields, I think, um, our Alex Gleitman reported that a while back that he's going to wear number one. So um, you, we have a story on that if you want to see all the new freshman numbers and and Justin Fields. But yeah, I think getting to see some of these guys where they stand. Obviously, they they haven't done much, just winter conditioning. But you know where the coaches, what the coaches think of them this at this point in their career. You know. Um, at the running back position, so we've talked previously about with Mike Weber gone. You know, where's that rotation? Can can Marcus Crowley be involved in that? Uh, you know, the defensive defensive ends. You know, are they stepping in right away, or do they look like guys that maybe a little bit more rotation here throughout the spring? Um, you know, it's it's going to be uh, 
it's going to be nice to get some some opportunities to see that early on and then kind of watch throughout the spring where these guys progress to and kind of how they come out of spring. As you said, the freshmen are always an intriguing story for everyone just because of the newness factor. Um, they don't all end up playing, and, and some of them you don't hear about again really for a, for another couple of years. But right now that's that's the exciting thing. And and Justin Fields, I, I group into that as well, being a new guy even though he's a sophomore. So I do think there's some guys in this class, specifically the two you mentioned in Fields and Harrison, that are going to make an impact um, as freshmen, also Garrett Wilson. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get our first glimpse of those guys today. And I feel like some – young wide receivers really need to step up. For they sure. have a pretty good core of five returning guys when you look at the four veterans. K.J. Hill is going to be tremendous. And then Austin Mack, as long as he's healthy. You know, Ben Victor, I know he's up and down, but he'll be a senior now. you got to figure he's going to put in his best year. C.J. Saunders, another fifth-year senior, former walk-on. And then Chris Olave is a sophomore, uh, but got a lot of game experience, especially that was highly productive toward the end of the year. So they've got those five guys returning. They need to add at least one or two guys to the rotation. So we're talking about guys like Jalen Harris, you know, guys like Blue Smith. You know, maybe Garrett Wilson can be one of those guys. In fact, I think Garrett Wilson will be one of those guys. I think he will play a decent amount as a true freshman. But as far as the other guys, you know, the non-five-star, uh, you know, guys that are uh, you know, in that group, Jalen Harris, Blue Smith, maybe who's the guy you're kind of bullish on? Maybe who's the guy that you're really looking forward to see out of that that young and in Jalen Harris's case, Patrick, not even necessarily young, but inexperienced wide receiving core because Jalen Harris is now a junior. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's crazy for me to think that that Austin Mack and Benjamin Victor are senior okay. on this team. And I don't know right. if that's just because they haven't put up, you know, crazy numbers and, and whatnot. And so I still think of them as young guys, but I remember talking to Austin Mack's parents at you know, Friday night lights or something out there. And yeah, it seems like just yesterday, but anyway, um, yeah, I think those, the guys you mentioned are, are, the, are the key ones. Um, I, I do want to see the development of Chris Olave. Obviously, we saw him at the end of last year really come on um, the two touchdowns against Michigan and, and the catches he made um, over the final handful of games with, with Austin Mack out. Um, but Jalen Harris is, I think, a guy that either, you know, it's kind of a put up or shut up year for him. And, and maybe it's a put up or shut up spring. You know, as you mentioned, a junior, he hasn't played a, a ton. I thought thought he would be the biggest bet not getting hurt. He seemed that natural fit with his size at six foot five, you know, 200 plus pounds to step in and, and you know, rotate with Benjamin Victor a little bit. Um, he didn't. I mean, we saw him very little after that injury, not much more than we had before. And, and Chris Olave kind of took that spot and they rotated guys around, um, you know, so, so I think he needs to really step up, um, showcase this spring that he's, you know, a viable option. At, at one of these positions, I mean, you know, it's it's tough because he is behind Mac and Victor, but clearly they didn't think that high of him last year. Get his name in the ring for, for that position in case there is another injury or or if he can, you know, find another place. Um, another guy, Cameron Babb, I'm interested, just, you know, didn't get to see him last year with an injury. Um, you know, a St. Louis kid, which is always near and dear to my heart. So, you know, I think I think we've we've touched on pretty much all of the scholarship wide receivers here, but uh, yeah, I think it's a big spring. You know, you lost a lot of talent in Johnny Dixon, Terry McLaurin, Paris Campbell. Um, those guys need to be replaced at the two positions. Obviously, KJ Hill will help uh, stepping up in a bigger role. I think Jalen Gill can play that H back position as well and can probably uh, force some time. But yeah, I think. I think you need to uh, you need to see something from these guys in the spring in order to be confident that you have that similar you know core group going into the fall that you have the last two years really. Let's close the show with a little basketball. It is March. Um, the Buckeyes are going to have a lot of madness if they don't win tonight. I mean, they have yeah. a big game tonight against Northwestern on the road. Um, I feel like they, if they win this game, they're in the NCAA tournament. If they lose. Um, you know, they're definitely at least on the bubble because they're still projected in right now. So I think you, if they get another Big Ten win, um, assure themselves at least nine regular season wins in the Big Ten, a chance to go 10 and 10 overall if they can beat Wisconsin. Tonight's going to be big. They're going to be without uh, Caleb Wesson again um, at Northwestern, 9 p.m. Eastern, Big Ten Network. Uh, just uh, your thoughts on tonight's game. Yeah, it's a must win. Um, you know, you're without Caleb Wesson, which certainly hurts. We obviously saw on Saturday just how bad they looked without Caleb Wesson, but that was against Purdue, who's a top 15 team and can really shoot the ball. Northwestern is the team in the bottom of the Big Ten standings, if not, they're very close. 
And uh, so, you know, even without your star and Caleb Wesson, if you're Ohio State, you should go in there and handle business. I say that knowing that playing at playing in Evanston um, has been tough for Ohio State in the past. You know, for whatever reason, they just seem to to struggle there. Even even in wins with some of their best Ohio State teams, they've struggled there. Um, you know, now that isn't indicative of of what will happen tonight, but you know, it's 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 always something to think about when you play at Northwestern. Uh, but yeah, it's it's got to be a win. I think, like you said, a win here. Um, almost assuredly puts them into the tournament. I think you get to 20 wins, they're definitely in. Um, you know, and especially if you can then get a win in the uh, the Big Ten tournament. I think people, you know, just because of the form they've had since since the start of the new year, forget that this team went 12 and one and beat a couple good teams. So you know, their resume was was pretty good heading into the Big Ten play. So it wasn't like just to make the tournament, which again, as our Steve Hellwagon likes to point out. You have to get 68 teams in, and 30 plus of those are at large bids. So, regardless of you know what what you think of Ohio State's recent form, they're a team that's that's you know like you said a chance to be 10 and 10 in the Big Ten. That's that's probably going to be good enough this year. Um, just given the weakness of the bubble, the teams on the bubble, some other conferences. So you know handle your business these last couple games if you're Ohio State. It sounds like they're going to get Caleb Wesson back for the Big Ten tournament. Maybe win a game there in Chicago, and then I think you're in. And you know you you kind of play the matchups then and hope you hope you can go on a little bit of a run, set yourself up for for something positive next year. But I think it would be a shame if they end up you know losing these last two games, losing the first round of the Big Ten tournament or their first game in the Big Ten tournament, and then don't make the tournament because I think. There's going to be a lot of momentum going to next year anyway, but if it, you're coming off the NCAA tournament appearance, I think there's you know a bit more buzz about this team um, heading into next year when when they get you know a, a star-studded freshman cast class coming in to join um, some of these players are, that are already on the roster. Great stuff from Patrick Murphy. We are now off to football practice. Thank you for joining us, Bucknutters. Let's hear the Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Bye.